Welcome back. Uh, in this video today, what we're going to be talking about is adjusting or controlling for variables a little bit more. In the last video, we talked about how we can take a causal diagram and we can plot out all of the paths that go from X to Y. And we know that if we want to identify the effect, the causal effect of X on Y, we need to make sure that we've closed all the back door paths while leaving all of the front door paths open. This is one way of identifying the causal effect of X on Y. And we said that the way that we're going to be able to close those backdoor paths is by controlling for variables that are on those paths. Remember, if you control for a variable that's on a path, that means that that path becomes closed. Unless it's a collider variable, we'll talk about that uh, in the next video. So what we're going to talk about today is how we can actually do that mechanically. What does it mean to be able to control for a variable? And what are we really doing when we do it? So let's go ahead and get started on that. So the basic idea, conceptually, of what you're doing when you're controlling for a variable is that you are trying to make sure that when you are looking at the relationship between X and Y, you're doing it only for people who have the same values of that control variable. You're basically saying, I know that one of the reasons why X and Y might be related to each other is because people with X and people without X might have different values of this variable. So in the example that we used before of going to the doctor's office, we said that something that might mess us up is how sick you were beforehand. Uh, people who go to the doctor's office might be more sick to begin with than people who aren't. And so if you check in on whether they're sick after they went to the doctor's office, you're likely to find that people who went are more, are more sick afterwards than people who didn't, but that's because they were more sick beforehand. And so what controlling does is it says, okay, we know that they're different, that these that X and Y are related because of this other variable. We're going to make sure that all the variation in that other variable is swamped out. We're going to take it out so that when we compare X and Y to each other, we're only doing it within the people who have the exact same values of those control variables, which means that that sort of backdoor path doesn't exist anymore. We've gotten rid of it because we're getting rid of all the variation in that control variable, which means that there's no path to walk on. There's no variation. Everybody's the same. This is why you might hear people refer to controlling or adjusting as holding things constant. We're basically taking those control variables and holding them constant. We're making them the same for every single person. So that's the idea. How are we going to do that mechanically? The basic way we're going to do it is we're going to look for what that control variable explains statistically about X and Y. We're going to say for the doctor's office, how much of your doctor's office visit can I predict using the fact that you were sick beforehand? Let's say, for example, that of the people who are not already sick, 10% of them are going to go to the doctor's office. And of the people who are already sick, 60% of them are going to go to the doctor's office. And so I'm roughly explaining 50 percentage points of going to the doctor's office with being sick. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the outcome variable. So let's say that of the people who are not already sick, 5% of them are going to be sick afterwards. And of the people who were already sick, 90% of them were going to be sick afterwards. In that case, I'm explaining 85 percentage points of being sick afterwards with the fact that you were sick already. And I'm going to take both of those out. I'm going to take what I can explain out. And when I, when that, what is happening when I do that, when I take out what I can explain, it means that I'm saying, okay, 10% uh, of you were going to go to the doctor's office if you weren't sick. 60% of you were. I'm going to remove that difference, right? I've explained those 50%, that 50 percentage point gap, and I'm going to remove that difference, which is basically saying, I'm going to hold constant the fact that you were sick before, and I'm only going to compare within that band. That's the concept of what we're doing. So how can we do that computationally? The way we're going to do it is first we're going to see what part of X is explained by W. Uh, where W is our control variable that we're controlling for and X is our treatment variable. And then we're going to subtract it out. Whatever's left over, we're going to call that the residual, the residual part of X. What I mean by explain in this class is we're going to take all the different values of W. So either you were sick before or you weren't. And then we're going to take the average of X within all those values of W. So of the people who were not sick before, right? 10% uh, of them were going to go to the doctor's office. So the average of goes to the doctor's office was Point one. Of the people who were sick before, 60% of them were going to go to the doctor's office. So I'm taking the average of goes to the doctor's office within the people who were already sick, and I get an average of 0.6 or 60%. So those are the explained parts, that 10% and that 60%. That's what I would expect about your going to the doctor's office 
based on what I know, whether or not you were already sick. So I observe that you're already sick. I say, hmm, I bet there's a 60% chance that you're gonna go to the doctor's office. That's the part that I can explain about you. Then I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna subtract it out. So if you went to the doctor's office, that's a one, right? Um, and, and you were already sick, I, you go to the doctor's office, I expected there was a 60% chance that you go to the doctor's office. The difference there, the residual, is 0.4 or 40%. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with why. I'm gonna see what I can predict about whether or not you're sick afterwards with whether you're sick before, and then I'll take that part out. Finally, I'm gonna do some sort of analysis afterwards using those residuals. So I'm gonna take what, I've, what I can explain with the control variable, I'm gonna subtract it out, I'm gonna take what's left over, that's the residual, and I'm gonna do some sort of analysis, some sort of relationship with those beforehand. So if going to the doctor's office and being sick afterwards are still related to each other, are still correlated, after I've taken out the part that's explained with whether you were sick before, that is the relationship between going to the doctor's office and being sick afterwards, controlling for being sick before. And that is the, well, the relationship having closed that particular back door. We're closing that back door. Now, there are lots of different ways to explain one variable with another. In this class, we're just going to do it the method that I explained. If you're, in a, if you're not in my class, maybe you're more familiar with doing it with regression or something like that. Let's actually walk through this. So what I've done here is I've created some fake data. So first I loaded in the tidyverse and then I created a data set, a tibble. Uh, first of all, I started by creating W, which is either a zero or one variable. We're going to end up controlling for W. Then I created X and I made it a function of W. So we know that W causes X, right? Because if I had gotten a different value of W up here, that would make me get a different value of X down here. W causes X. Then I'm going to create Y using both X and W. So X causes Y and W causes Y. We can imagine the causal diagram that we might get based on this data. I'm going to create a new Daggety model. I'm going to start with our exposure variable X. I'm going to have an outcome variable Y. And I know that X causes Y because I made that be true. I also have W. And I know that W causes X and W causes Y. And immediately it's going to tell me if I want to get the effect of X on Y, I need to adjust for W. Right, we have a back door here. We have a front door from X to Y, and we have a back door X to W to Y. So if I want the effect of X on Y, I need to close this back door. So how are we going to do that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the average of X and Y within the different values of W. And then we're going to take the residuals. So we're going to create some new variables. So first we're going to do group by W, and this will tell us to take the average within each value of W. And I'm going to mutate. I'm going to take, I'm going to get the X, the explained part of X. It's going to be the mean of X, and it's taking it within each value of W. I'm also going to get the explained part of Y, which is the mean of Y within each value of W. Then I'm going to get the residual. So I'm going to say I'm going to X, the residual is going to be X, minus the explained part of x. And I'm also going to get the y residual is equal to y minus the explained part of y. Before that, I'm going to make sure to ungroup before I do that. So I'm going to run this. So we can look at the correlation here between x and y, both before we control for the variable and then also after. Uh, so we're going to do the correlation of data x with data y, and we get 0.77. And that's telling us that the relationship between them is certainly positive, it's relatively strong, as we would expect. We know that X causes Y. But even though we get sort of the right result in that it's positive as it should be, uh, there's still something left out in that we still know that this relationship that we have, this 0.77, has that back door still in it. And we want to get rid of that back door. We want to control for W. And we did that, so let's see what the result is after we control for W by looking at the relationship between the residuals of X and the residuals of Y. So we do the correlation with, between data XR and data YR, and we get 0 0.70. Not a huge difference from 0.77, but it is different uh, because we closed that back door. And this is the actual causal relationship between X and Y, whereas the 0.77 was not. It was biased by the fact that we had that back door in there. We can also watch how this works in real time. We're going to start with our raw data. So we have two groups with two different values of W. We have X and Y. We're going to take the average within X and within Y. Those are the explained parts. We're going to take them out. We're going to subtract them out. Then we're going to do the same thing with Y, get the average 
uh, of y within each value of w, take those out too. And then look at the relationship of what we have left over. That's, what, that's basically what happens when you control for w and you get that left over. But the real important thing is that we're adjusting for w, we're controlling for w, which means that we're taking out everything that we can that's explained by w and only using what's left over so that we make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. We're taking out all of the relationship between x and y that is caused by that backdoor path that w is on. And so by doing this, we're, co we're closing all the backdoor paths that w is on. That's it. That's how you control for a variable. Thank you very much.